Original plans and contract details for Mustafa Ali have been revealed, plus a top NXT star has quietly moved to SmackDown, and a second-generation WWE star gets, you guessed it, a name change. It's all in the wrestling news right now. Mustafa Ali back on Raw, and he got a win. He beat The Miz. That's it certainly good. did. It is good. I'm glad just to see him again. Yeah. Really. Lost. They got battered by Champa after. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. bad. <laughs> oh, but I'm looking forward to the match, though. Oh, they'll have a banger. Yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. have a banger. Fightful give us some details on his return, saying as of Sunday afternoon, plans actually called for Mustafa Ali to lose his return match against The Miz. Virtually everything else played out as it was planned, but it was decided. Um, really Monday when Mustafa Ali got to the building there were changes made and they went okay. just, let's just have Ali win like it's a very WWE thing to do to have the guy welcome back strong return I have lost I'm almost surprised the story is this way around you'd think the, the plan would be for him to win and then they go no oh, maybe you should lose actually so it's almost reassuring that they've actually gone the other way with it and gone you're losing I don't know no, you should probably win this one actually. you should probably have a go on this one uh, Ali who was scheduled to be at Raw on Monday we talked about this from Fight for Select on the Monday news video uh, met up with Johnny Ace and they had a talk about numerous other things and some big creative plans and all this stuff uh, now in terms of Ali's contract uh, it is, he's there until mid-2024. He talked about this on Twitter, saying, oh, I'll see you in a couple of years. The plan yeah. was he was going to sit out his deal. Um, now, WWE uh, can, if they want to, freeze his deal and add time on at the end. That would be a nasty thing to do. Because mm, he's technically not been around. They could just go, all right, we'll just, just do it at the end. Now, uh, Fightful Select say they haven't done that at this point. However, there is a possibility they could still extend it due to this inactivity. Thus far, no indication given as to what will happen. So potentially, it says mid-2024. It could be late 2024 when his contract expires. But, I mean, as you've mentioned, Five Falera saying that, that there's no indication that that would happen, which, no. which I guess raises issues. I don't really understand it because in my mind, they're not using him. How is that equal to inactivity, I suppose? It's I more really the know. fact that he, uh, the, from what I can glean... Maybe it was from going on Twitter and... Maybe a bit of that, and also the fact that he wasn't coming to the shows. Yeah, okay, <laughs> he wasn't yeah, right, actually right, coming right. to make himself a available for Got the you. events. I think it's one of them where if you are at the shows every week, it still counts as you being on your contract. Okay. If you just sit, if you sit at home instead, then it counts as you being an actor. Okay. Right. I think. Mm. It would make sense. It makes sense. Um, Ali and Champa first feud, and then Ali very much setting his sights on the US title to face Theory. Um, thoughts on other people you'd like to see? Ooh. Mustafa Ali mix it up with. Oh, Ricochet. Yeah. 100%. Ricochet's even teased that on the Twitter. Yes, he has. Um, he's a teasy boy. Mm. Uh, I, I'd like to see... Oh, there's, there's various. You know what, right? It's It probably would never happen, um, but Brock Lesnar has his best matches against small men. He just throws them everywhere. And I think that would be an absolute banger of a match. However, I can't really see it happening. But we've seen the likes of Lesnar versus Balor and that sort of thing. So... It would be a fantastic matchup. I just don't think it's very likely. Mm, it could be a sleeper, mm. potentially. Uh, let's move over to NXT. Uh, a quiet move from Tuesday nights to Fridays, Jack. Yes, for none other than LA Knight, the most overman in NXT 2.0 history. Um, he's now not in, in NXT anymore. According to Fightful Select, he's not considered a part of the NXT roster. He is, in fact, considered main roster already after his SmackDown Dark Match appearances where I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, he's mainly been fulfilling the role of a manager yes. rather than an in-ring wrestler. So he's building a, a stable of big lads He's a big guide. Lad. But, they but, but Mace is a bigger lad. Okay, fair enough, fair so, enough. So, you know, he's now called Face. Because he's a handsome man. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, I thought oh, it was an A-team reference. Oh, yeah, it might have been an A-team yeah. reference. Uh, Mr. T did drop on the on 2K22 this week, What's, so potentially. Uh, what do you make of L.A. Barakas's, um, <laughs> nah, I didn't actually have a question. I just wanted to get that No, in. I like it. I mean, I, I, in terms of, like, his run as a manager, I, mm. think, I think he'd be great as a manager. Of course. Uh, and the dark match stuff that we've seen looks fun. And I think the the, the common thing is if you have wrestlers that, that have the, the look and the and the the, the presence yep. but can't do the talking, you put somebody with them that can do the talking for them. Yes. It's very 
classic wrestling 101. So LA Knight is perfect in that role. To me, it's just a little bit confusing because this is the sort of thing I would have expected to happen in the black and gold days of, uh, of NXT, mm. uh, where where you'd get like a big obvious disconnect between what they had planned for somebody on the NXT roster, and then when they moved up, it was nothing like what they were doing in NXT. Whereas now it's all run by the same people, so you'd think, well, why why did they have LA Knight as this very much uh, like a featured part of the programming mm. as a wrestler, and now he's moved up? And now he's totally a manager. It's really weird to me. I still do feel like LA Knight is part of the black and gold brand of oh, NXT. He did. I still think he's, they think yeah. of him as 1.0. Okay. So therefore, when they come up, they've got to tweak him as a 1.0. I, I do believe that when we get to those black and, the, the, when the black and gold brand guys are all moved up mm. or moved away, when you've got guys like Bron Breaker, like Joe Gacy. Tony. Like Tony D'Angelo, they'll all come up as they are. Okay, I think. and I can't wait. That'll I feel. Just can't I wait. think that's what they will do. But they've just got. They've, there's a few, a few little bits to tidy up around the edges of Black and Gold NXT. Mm, okay. uh, in terms of another throwback from Black and Gold NXT, uh, the house show run. Five will select saying, for those asking, we've heard nothing of NXT returning to the road soon. We will continue to ask about the process. I think it's valuable they do. I think so too. But a, a big, I, I did the um, the live Twitch stream reactions for uh, NXT over WrestleMania weekend, stand and deliver, um, and, and a, a common thing in the chat was people saying like the crowd's dead, the crowd's dead, and the, I don't know if the crowd were were totally quiet, but they were certainly less raucous than they are in WWE's kind of controlled environment, I suppose. Yeah. Maybe that's part of the reason they're hesitant. Maybe it just wouldn't make them that much money. There was also less people there. The, yeah, there it was, was, a, it was a, a big arena with not many people. A few people took photos from the ringside area on uh -huh. the hard cam. Like, and, and very flat, like photos going, what a great match, what a great night this is. But all you could see behind this great action, just rows and rows of empty seats on, yeah. on that hard cam side. Yeah. On the opposite of the hard cam. So there is, so it's, I guess it's a lack of interest, but the thing is, was when they did do house shows for NXT, the Coconut Loop, as it was known, mm. uh, they were smaller venues that, that, that kind of promised less and delivered more in doing so. So you could eat, I reckon if you put on, if you've if you got like a small rec center <clears throat> somewhere in Florida with like a hundred odd, tickets on sale and put an NXT banner on it. Yeah. I think you'd sell them. Yeah, fair and enough. I think it's just the one thing that the roster for NXT 2.0 genuinely needs more of is reps. Like that's mm. why we've seen a bunch of NXT 2.0 guys go to NXT UK recently, like Lash Legend and Von Wagner appearing on NXT UK. It's just they're getting their reps in and I think the coconut loop will be a good way of getting reps in, whether or not fair they enough. see it as invaluable. I do not know. Uh, Road Dogs launched a podcast. <clears throat> oh, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd better call somebody. It's actually called. Oh, you didn't know. It is it, called. What else could it be called? That's that is good. That is good. I do like that. I'd I be worried if they well. called it the Road Dog Podcast. <laughs> hey, yeah. He had a lovely chat on there about his hilarious TNA run as part of the Voodoo Kin Mafia, didn't he? Yes, he did. Obviously, for those who maybe w weren't watching at the time or don't know, the Voodoo Kin Mafia, the initials were VKM, which is Vince McMahon's initials. There was yeah. a very obvious jibe at Vince McMahon. And he said, it was always going to be VKM. Sat in my recliner and one of my children sat on the computer and I said, look up all the words that start with V. Then I thought, Voodoo is cool. Then I thought, well, Voodoo Kin is like, if he's going to be Kip James, then we're not really kin. So it's like Kabuki Kin. Okay, good. Voodoo Kin. Okay, so he's got that. That's locked in. Then the mafia just seemed to fit. So we came up with Voodoo Kin Mafia. I came up with that and Russo liked it. Of course Russo liked Russo it. Russo loved it. Um, <laughs> I never knew what to make of the name because voodoo, you think like, what kind of spooky, what are they going to get up to? Then it's just, then it's just the new age outlaws coming out. Until they got Roxy Laveau in there who okay. kind of gave it the voodoo queen vibe. Oh, but that was, yes. But that was really sort of uh, retrofitting to make it, like, I mean, it's, it, some of the best radio features start with a name and work backwards. So that's all VKM have done, really, by doing yeah. that. Uh, they were very honest about their run, and they said it was a couple of guys whose egos had got out of control. We thought we were bigger than the business. We thought, how dare they fire us? Look, once you come out of that fog that is drug addiction, and you kind of clear your mind, start thinking about your part in all this, like, what did I do? I did it all. They didn't do anything. I did it all, and I believe the same way. We've grown up, you know what I mean? No. Uh, we realized at the time that those feelings were real. I would have thought either of them, referring to Triple H and Shawn Michaels, who most of their vitriol was aimed at during their VK, VKM run, uh, if they showed up somewhere, I would have fought them at the time. But now I think about it and I go, man, what a piece of 
crumb I am. I, I feel a little bit bad for Rodok here, partly because I, I, I think he's really done himself a favor there by being very self-deprecating. It, it makes it, he's admitted he made mistakes and he wasn't the best person back then, but you know what? Neither was bloody Shawn Michaels, Jesse. You wanna you wanna st stick up for yourself a little bit, mate? I think, no, I don't know. Meet don't me know. at the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sort it out at the Alamo. My favorite bits of VKM were Meet Me at the Alamo mm -hmm. and the music and the entrance. Like, help, they're in my house, dun dun dun. And then they came out of those those automatic toilets on either side <laughs> of the yes. TNA. <laughs> I, I think just a hot mess. I love it. Just on the just on the topic of Road Dogs podcast, that's one that I'm I'm pretty tempted to give a regular listen to. I, I think, think he'll have some great should. stories, and obviously he's a great orator as well. Mm, mm. I like that. You should you should add that to your list. Mm. Uh, Fine Alamar, a second generation star, has got you guessed it a name change ahead of their WWE debut. Who are we talking about? We're that? talking about Bianca Corelli, the daughter of Santino Morella. Mm. Now this name change, I don't mind too much because she's very very new. We, we are it's not as an established a name yet it's not going to be as jarring now that it's been changed but it has been changed to ariana grace oh okay i think that's fine i think that's okay i i think i prefer bianca corelli however <laughs> They're not doing the real names thing right now. So no. there, there was no real way around that, I suppose. Bianca Morella. Bia yeah. But could Bianca or Morella, Morella, it could or Bianca Morella. Morella. If it was Morella, Morella though, do you think that, oh, that's what I was going to say, do you think that would kind of tarnish her with her that sort of comedic legacy that her dad had? Ah, that's a good shout. If she didn't want to go that way. I don't know. I don't know. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah, well, we'll see. She hasn't made her official in-ring debut yet, uh, has Grace, but look out for the daughter of Santina Morella yes. on NXT. Maybe part of the breakout tournament. We will see when we will find out together. Uh, one person who's had their name changed for WWE recently is Gunter, mm. formerly Volta. He and I had a lovely chat the other night about the WWE UK tour. He's in Newcastle tomorrow night. Talked about why he came to America. He also gave not only details on whether or not Vince McMahon would, would take a chop from him. Okay. He also gave his strategy for how he beat Tyson Fury. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In a boxing match or just I, in I'm a I'm thinking fight. like a mixed one like that Ali and Oki hot mess okay. a while ago. Something like that. That'd be fun. If he didn't say lie on his back and do the little <laughs> kicks like Inoki did, then I'm going to be sorely disappointed. Oh, well, brace yourself <laughs> for partial excitement. Uh, my chat with Gunter on the YouTube channel a little later on today and on the podcast feed later and more news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.